November 2nd, 1979. Just another normal day at this prison. Families were visiting their loved ones, but things would quickly change. A group of visitors had a different plan. They would pull out 45 caliber pistols and a stick of dynamite. These imposter visitors up. took two correctional officers hostage, then seized a prison van. Before making their getaway with an inmate at the prison, the inmate was in prison for murdering a New Jersey state trooper, Werner Forrester, and was held by some in America as a political prisoner. Asada Shakur, a member of the Black Liberation Army, was the inmate that had just broken out of this prison. It was later determined that the visitors' identities weren't checked, and they also weren't searched by staff prior to them entering the visitation area. Shakur is still on the run to this day and fled from the US to Cuba. Several people involved were arrested in connection with the escape. Back then, this prison was called Clinton Correctional Facility for Women. It now goes by the name Edna Mann Correctional Facility for Women, and it started as the New Jersey Reformatory for Women. We'll be taking a look at this women's prison in the state of New Jersey that has been wrought with controversy over its 100-year history. Let's get into it. Edna Mann Correctional Facility for Women is located in Clinton, New Jersey, a town of under 3,000 known for its distinctive red mill. Main Street is under two miles from the prison facility and the Big Apple, New York City, is about 50 miles to the west. As of August 2022, the prison was housing 383 women. The state of New Jersey describes this prison as a campus-like setting with housing units and various support buildings. The prison has two separate compounds, one for minimum security inmates and the other for medium and maximum security inmates. The prison was built in 1913 and was the first women's prison in the state of New Jersey. At the time, all women in New Jersey were being kept in local county jails or men's facilities. It was as early as 1906 that the need for a prison that was solely for women was introduced. One of the earliest inmates was Miss Minnie Johnson Cobb McKenzie Anderson Carey Clinton. She pled guilty to being married to five different men at once in 1913 and received an indefinite sentence. An early escape from the prison would occur in 1915. Pearl Nichols and Nettie Garrison would elude the guards. When providing a description of the women to the public, officials would describe the women as nice looking and pretty. I'm not sure that description was helpful in any way. In 1928, Edna Mann became superintendent of the prison. Her legacy would leave a lasting impact of being a prison reformer. She would remain superintendent until her death in 1968. Mann is actually buried on the prison grounds. Due to concerns with towns being named after prisons, due to the poor image it conveys, a bill was passed in New Jersey to change the names of several prisons, and Clinton Correctional Facility for Women was one of them. In 1987, it would be named for the former superintendent, Edna Mann. Before we move on to scandals and controversies at this prison, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy my prison profiles. Unfortunately, abuse by staff at women's facilities is not a new occurrence. In a scathing report by the US Department of Justice in 2020, it found that there is reasonable cause to believe that the conditions at Edna Mann Correctional Facility for Women in Clinton, New Jersey violate the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution. There has been a long history of officers having inappropriate relationships with inmates, which is a criminal offense. Inappropriate relationships also occur between inmates. On October 7th, 2022, Tyrell Harris McLaughlin was charged with second degree sexual assault, official misconduct, and fourth degree criminal sexual contact. He is pending trial, and the Office of Public Integrity and Accountability released a statement saying, when law enforcement officers assault and exploit those subject to their authority, as alleged here, we will ensure that they are fully investigated and prosecuted. Demi Minor, a transgender female inmate, was moved from this facility to a men's prison in July 2022, after it was revealed that she had gotten two female inmates pregnant. Minor, who is serving a 30-year sentence for manslaughter, is a biological male who was moved to the facility following a lawsuit by the ACLU. A settlement was reached that required New Jersey to house inmates based upon their gender identity instead of their sex. Following the transfer to a male facility, Minor wrote a letter that read, 
As a woman who is transgender, I truly fear what lies ahead for me. It's clear that staff have looked for some kind of security reasons to kick me out of the only female correctional facility. Should transgender inmates be housed with the gender they identify as? Let me know in the comments your thoughts. January 11th, 2021. Administrative segregation for the prison is known as the Restorative Housing Unit. Inmates in the unit were reportedly throwing liquid and a white substance at officers through the cracks in their doors. Staff determined that a cell extraction was required to search the cells for contraband. As is policy, the extractions of the inmates were filmed. You can see officers throwing punches at the inmate. It was reported that three inmates would suffer injuries that night. One inmate had a concussion, another a broken orbital bone, and a third woman had her arm broken. Claims of inappropriate grabbing would also be made. Upon an independent review of the incident, 14 correctional officers would be indicted. According to the indictment, officers planned, supervised, participated in, or failed to stop one or more four cell extractions on the restorative housing unit tier with the purpose of punishing, intimidating, or terrorizing one or more inmates. These cases remain ongoing. Due to scandals at the prison, along with the age of the facility, the state announced that they would be shutting down the prison. Governor Phil Murphy made this announcement in June 2021. In March 2023, a spokesperson for the state released a statement reporting that $90 million has been set aside in the budget for construction of the new prison. This facility will remain operational and it is unknown how long it will take for the new prison to come online. New Jersey settled a class action lawsuit in 2021 for $21 million that 20 current and former inmates had filed. It looks like New Jersey is trying to forget this prison ever existed. What about the women at this prison? Who is being housed here? Several women at this prison are convicted of killing their husbands. Kathleen Dorsett murdered her husband in 2010. Melanie McGuire did the same in 2004. Loretta Burroughs dismembered her husband in 2007, but wouldn't be convicted until 2015. She is now 72 years old, and with a parole eligibility date of 2060, Burroughs will take her last breath behind prison walls. Let's take a look at a couple of women at the prison that made more recent news. Caitlin McClure was part of a GoFundMe scam that made national headlines a couple of years ago. She and her co-defendant, Mark D'Amico, came up with a fake story in November 2018 claiming that a homeless veteran, Johnny Bobbitt Jr., had given his last $20 to them after her car ran out of gas. The pair appeared on the news several times in support of a campaign called Paying It Forward, with the goal of raising money on a GoFundMe account to help Bobbitt. Authorities became suspicious of the pair after Bobbitt sued them when he claimed he didn't receive any money. McCor was arrested, tried, and convicted of theft by deception and was sentenced to three years in prison. She is currently housed at this prison with a parole eligibility date of October 23rd, 2023. Amy Locaine, an original cast member of Melrose Place, is currently serving a prison term at Edna Man Correctional Facility for women. On June 27, 2010, she would wreck into another car killing a passenger. Locaine was drunk at the time and tested at 0.23, almost three times the legal limit. The case would get complicated she would be tried, convicted, and sentenced to just three years in 2013. Locaine would serve her time and be released in 2015. This would not be the end though. Several years later, an appeals court would rule that the sentence was too light and she was resentenced to eight years in prison. Locaine re-entered custody at the prison in 2020 and will likely be at the prison at least another year. The Edna Man Correctional Facility for Women may be the most controversial in the United States. Thanks for watching. As always, see you next time.